Okay, in this session, I'm going to introduce the GIFT toolbox. We will go through this toolbox and to show you how to perform the group ICA using the dataset that I've provided to you this week. Please include the group ICATV4.0B pass into the Metabot pass. So now I'm going to set the pass right now. So again, uh, go to the Metabot environment, uh, click the set pass under the home. And now please uh, using the button of add with subfolders, use this one. And now just find the, uh, okay, find the uh, folders that you, you just downloaded from the website, group ICATV4.0B. Okay, so select this one. Okay, so you can see uh, all these subfolders will be automatically included in the main level pass right here. And click save and close. And now, uh, how to make sure that you uh, set up correctly, not just type in the gift, G-I-F-T, all in lower cases, okay? Do not use the upper cases, gift. If you set up correctly, then you will see this, uh, uh, this interface uh, just pop out. So this one is the main interface right here. So let me, right here. So give that is uh, a mail of a toolbox. So you can see the interface is uh, actually uh, included several different panel right here. The first one is the analysis function panel right here. Uh, this in, in this includes three different button right here. So what you what you are going to do is click the first button. The first button is labeled as the setup ICA analysis right here. And then the second button, run analysis. So for the first one, you will just set up the several different parameters, including file paths, uh, number of the components, or what kind of the ICA algorithm you would like to use. And then after you uh, set up all the uh, parameters, you will you will have a, a parameters file, ICA parameters files within your uh, assigned folder. Then you can click the run analysis. It will uh, uh, perform all the analysis steps for you. After the uh, run analysis, uh, I think the display GUI will automatically pop up. If not, you can just click this button. Or sometimes you may want to review the analysis that you performed uh, previously. Then you can click the, this display GUI and select again the uh, parameter file that you uh, created in the first step. Then you can uh, review the result. Finally, for uh, these two uh, these two functions right here, actually there are multiple functions under this pop-up menu. This is, uh, can definitely help you to review the result. And I will introduce this later. They will uh, automatically generate, I think, two very useful report for you, even for the uh, manuscript, uh, manuscript or thesis preparation, or even for you to discuss or review the result. I think this is pretty useful. Okay, so you can use this so-called gift toolbox to perform definitely group, uh, group, anal uh, group IC analysis. But if you only have one single subject data on here, can you perform the IC? The answer is yes, affirmative. You can do so. Use the same toolbox. You can only use the, uh, you can use the uh, gift toolbox to perform IC on single subject. That wouldn't be a problem. The whole procedure is actually the same. Okay, I mean the, the operating procedure is actually the same. Okay. So now you can uh, try to confirm whether you have the uh, the right data set on here, right here. So if you uh, unzip the, the data set that I provide to you today, this one, FMRI analysis 10, week 10, underlying materials right here. You should see uh, four different folders and uh, one SPM.mat file right here. And uh, uh, for two, two of the four folders right here, sub uh, sub zero one and sub zero two, are actually the uh, FMI and uh, C one data set I provided for you. So you can see if I uh, click the sub zero one, you can see there are two different files right here. One is a, a pretty large one, around two hundred and fifty megabytes right here, and you can see the file name is M S. W A. So you can see M, what does M represent? That means we have already performed the 
BIOS correction, right? This is the final step. Then smoothing and normalize W and A realigned, okay? So, so you can, uh, no, no, not realign, the slice timing. So you can see uh, we have uh, already finished all the preprocessing steps right here. And for the T1 weighted image right here, the file size is around two mega, uh, two megabytes. And you can see the file name is actually, again, start with M because this is also the BIOS corrected, uh, normalized T1 weighted image right here. So M and W right here. Okay, so you can, if you just want to confirm, just uh, open this file using a micro or Chrome, so right here, you can see. And actually, uh, the data set I provided to you is actually the data set collected from the uh, stroke patient right here. So you can see it's some lesion for these uh, subcortical regions right here. Uh, I think located in the putama region right here. Okay, so you can see another one is the processed uh, uh, FMI data set. We have 215, 215 uh, time points or files right here. So again, you can see the imaging uh, homogeneity is pretty good because we have already performed the uh, the bias correction right there. Okay, so this is the data set within the sub zero one border and uh, pretty similar data set within the sub zero two, but now the images for uh, second subjects right here. Okay, and another two folders right here is actually produced by the gift toolbox. So you can produce uh, the result by your by yourself. But uh, this too is just in case if you you cannot follow the uh, follow our tempo, you can just use uh, you can just use these two folders as the results. Okay, but you definitely need to try whether you can produce the result using uh, the raw data sets right here. Okay, and the spm.med file is actually acquired by using the SPN uh, first label, first label specification, okay? Once you finish the first label specify, you can obtain this kind of SPN.med file within a data folder, right? I just copy this to here. And uh, why we need this one, I will explain this later, so don't worry. So right now, you, uh, as you can see right here, for each subject, you have these two different data set. And uh, I may, Again, emphasize that uh, BIOS correction step is actually pretty important for uh, ICA analysis. Sometimes people may ignore this step. However, if you uh, if you used a high channel number head coil to acquire data set, for example, we use thirty two channel. Now, I think uh, some hospital or some research institute may may have these uh, sixty four channel head coil. Then Bias correction will be very, very important because the uh, imaging inhomogeneity will be very, very severe. So you definitely need to use the bias correction to ensure the homogeneity of your image. Okay. If not, you may find out that sometimes the ICA result will become, uh, you know, one component for the outer part and one component one component for the inner part. That is definitely caused by the uh, inhomogeneity of the image. So if you can, please perform the BIOS correction. But I can say if you really want to ignore this step, you need to make sure that you didn't use the high, high uh, channel number head coil. If you are using eight channel or 12 channel, then that may be fine. But if you use the channel number over 20, over than 20, then I would say BIOS correction is definitely the one step that I recommend you to perform, okay? Okay, so now let's go back to the um, ICA interface right here. As I mentioned, that the very first step would be this one. Just click the setup ICA uh, analysis button right here. So let's click this one. Then you will see there is a um, file selection window pop up. And then if you can tell that actually this is the same window um, crop from the SBN8. So that's why I say you should not include the Chinese character or something because they just use the SPM selector uh, functions right here. Okay, so now oh, again, I should change. I should change the current folder of the SPM so I can conveniently select the, the file right here. Okay, so now let me do this again. Okay. So first, first of all, it will ask you to select 
analysis the output directory. So you don't need to specify the uh, subject data set right now. You need to give a, a directory that you'd like to output your result. So you may create a new folder under the FMI analysis 10 underlying materials folder. You may call maybe just ICA or something. Maybe I can type gift or something or, or group ICA. Something like this. Okay, this is a folder you'd like to put all the exported result uh, in this folder. So now I may come back, click the previous folder, and uh, come back again. Okay, now I, I will select this one, GICA. You can see now there uh, there is a number one right here. Okay, it means you have already selected one folder. So in this case, if you'd like to select other other things, it will be no function. If you want to select others, if you correct the wrong vote right here, you need to click reset button right here. Then you can see the number will become zero again. Now you can uh, select the other folders right here. But again, if you correct, uh, if you select the wrong one, just click reset and click the wrong one, a uh, right one. Okay. So only one folder is allowed to select to be selected. Okay, so if you collect, uh, if you select the output folder, then you will see the setup, setup panel right here. The very first one, it will uh, ask you to input a prefix. It's just any character you'd like to uh, use as a pre pre prefix for the output file. So normally I will put uh, ICA or G or something, depends on what you want. So it doesn't matter, just put something you want. Okay, do not use the special character like the uh, question mark or or start uh, sign or something. Don't use that. Just use a uh, character right here. And then uh, the second part would ask you to select the FMI data file. So now please collect. Uh, please click the select button right here. Okay. Now you will see uh, the system will ask you: Is your data stored in one group folder? Normally, I will select no because uh, I'm the old school person and I like to select the data manually. So I would always select no. But if you really want to uh, sometimes to save your uh, effort, you can put all the data within one folder. But remember, you need to give them pretty similar structure. For example, all start with the M, uh, S, W, A, then come with different subject labeling. For example, subject 0, 1. For another file, M, S, W, A, subject, uh, subject 2 or something, you need to put all the files within one folder. Then, give the toolbox may help you to automatically select all the data files. However, the, um, right now, I will click no. Okay. So if you select the no option right here, it will pop up another, another window. So it will ask you, how many subjects do you have right now? So I will say two. We have two subject folders. If you have only one, then click one, it would be fine. And uh, how many sessions uh, per subject? In our data set, it's only one session. But sometimes, as I said before, if you think that uh, uh, include 20 blocks for uh, within one session is too, too long or too tedious for the subject, you can separate your experiment into two sessions. Then in that case, you may have two sessions right here. Okay, but now we only have one session for each subject, so just leave one here. It's okay. Okay, press OK now, right now. Now it will uh, pop out a select FMI data uh, menu right here. So now what you are going to do is to click each of the selections right here. If you have subject one, session one, then you just click on this one. Then again the file selection window will pop up. Now this is a time that you should click on subject 01. And now you can see you don't really need to do this so-called file filter that you do in the SPM uh, 8 or 12. Actually, the give the toolbox will automatically uh, identify how many files is included in its one, one NFT file. So you can see this one is actually uh, 215 files within this one. Click this one. Now you will see the file selected is now actually 215, not 1, but 215. Okay, just click OK. Now you have finished the uh, first one, so selected files is right here. Okay, now you click the second subject. Okay, now you click the sub, sub 0 2 folder. Again, you select the FMI data set right here. Do not select 
the anatomical file right here because we are going to perform the ICR on FMR data set, not, not the T1 wicked image right here. So you just click the first one, it's okay. Okay, so now you finish, you finish the, all the assignment right here, just click the OK button right here. Okay, so now you can see the select the button would become yes right here. Okay, then uh, the final thing you need to adjust is actually this one the number of IC. As I mentioned before, that the number of IC is one of the uh, pre specified uh, parameters that you need to give for the IC algorithm. So it won't um, by itself estimate the optimal number of IC for you. You need to specify the number. Normally, uh, for the empirical uh, number, for the human brain or for the human FMI data, normally uh, the number between 20 and 30 would be fine. Normally we use 20 or 25 or 30. I would tell you that if you uh, set the number too small, then it will be a tragedy because uh, the, the brain will be, in, the FMI data will be enforced to only separate it into, um, I think, a few, few, few different networks. That means you will have a very, very huge cluster for each network. That is not a good thing. So normally, based on the literature, I think 25 is one of the numbers that I mostly try for first. Okay. Only if that I cannot identify the reasonable network, I will change the number. Okay. Otherwise, 25 is always the first number that I try. And if you really want to ask what is the optimal, what is the correct number for IC number, I cannot give you the answer. I think uh, no one can give you the answer. However, there uh, there are several different approaches that can help you to estimate the possible the possible uh, optimal number of the IC. You have the algorithm. However, uh, the algorithm is very time consuming, and uh, sometimes they have very weird relationship between the uh, suitable IC number and the the recommended uh, recommended. IC number. For example, sometimes some algorithm may give you uh, a number around a hundred, but then some authors would say, or some people would say, that if you see the number of a hundred that are recommended by the algorithm, you can put in thirty. It's kind of a weird relationship that you don't really key in a hundred networks because it's too many. Okay, so I think the number between twenty and thirty. Is the things you need to try. But for now, we try 25 right here. Okay, so after this, you will find out that you actually don't need to change any other parameters in this panel. Leave all the default value is actually recommended by the authors of the gift toolbox. Only if you think that you are familiar with these parameters or you cannot get reasonable results by the default values, then you can try to adjust the value. However, uh, in my experience, this kind of uh, uh, cases is, uh, is, is never happened. So actually just use the uh, default value will be fine. So you, what do you need to do? The first one, prefix. Second one, image selection. Third one, change the number of IC. Then click done. Okay. Oh, what's going on? Oh, and then file name. If you see this uh, error message right here, just like I, I see right now, that because of your Found it include a Chinese character. Sorry. You can see there is the Chinese character right here. So this is a wrong example, sorry. So I need to copy all the files into my desktop. So do not, do not, do not include any Chinese character. So this one. Yeah, this should be better. So let me do this again. Okay, so come back. Let me do this again. So now I will select uh, again GIC as the output folder and I put G and I select the file. So, no, okay. Just no. Okay. So I have two subjects right here. Let me assign them. This one and this one. Okay, perfect. So again I came 25 for the number of IC. Okay, just click it down. So then you will see there is a second, there is a second parameter figures just show up. Again, I would say you don't need to change anything. Just click OK again. Okay. That's all. 
that's uh, all the uh, steps you need to specify or set up the IC analysis. And then for the second step, I just click the run analysis button right here. Now it will ask you to select the, uh, an ICA parameter file. That is the one that's under the GICA folder right here. So this one, okay. Then you will see this is the uh, some information I provided to you. Normally, you definitely need to uh, perform all steps, all analysis steps. Just click the first one, okay? Then you can see there are three different options right here. Sometimes when you really uh, deal with the uh, huge data set, uh, maybe include uh, 100 or 200 uh, subjects data set, then you may need to use the first one. Maximize performance. It may use the lowest, uh, lowest uh, um, the, the memory capacity. But for the final one, I think uh, for now you can just pick the final one. It will be okay. Okay. And click it done. It only take I think only a couple minutes, one or two minutes. Then the the analysis will will be done. Just wait. It won't be too long. And as you can see right here, it actually will display the iterations right here. You can see the step number right here. Sometimes if you uh, see the step number going to very high, for example, a thousand and it's never stopped, that means the algorithm cannot get the uh, good result, cannot converge. That means uh, you, may, uh, uh, you may double check whether your, your setup is uh, not that good. For example, you may reduce or increase the uh, IC component number, or you may check whether you input the correct minimized uh, asset. However, if everything is good enough, then you will see, actually, after, I think it's only two minutes around, around two minutes, then you will see the display GUI uh, window will automatically pop up. Okay. So this is the uh, display result. If you can see this figure right here, that means the IC analysis uh, is finished. Okay. So let me go back to the PowerPoint slide. So you can see, I, I'd like to use this slide to introduce the component of the uh, display GUI right here. You can see the uh, left hand side is a figure that you just you just uh, saw, and you can see that on on the left, the lower corner right here, I just put the uh, number one right here. That means the first step you should do. This uh, display uh, panel will help you to overlay the uh, network or independent component on the anatomical imagery. If you didn't do so, you will see very, I would say very uh, ugly EPI data set. So we can try right here. If I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything, just click a display, what, do you, what do we will we we'll see? Just wait a moment, okay. Now you will see plenty windows just uh, pop out. Just wait a moment. Do not interrupt when some windows just showing up because it takes time. It takes maybe 30 seconds to wait. When will it end? Until you see three buttons on the right lower kernel right here. Actually, there is a left arrow, right arrow, arrow button, and there is actually it's, it's exist the button, E-X-I-T, but the, the button is too small to display all the characters right here. OK, you can see, uh, to me, it's pretty ugly because for the EPI data set, we never anticipated that we can see clear anatomical structures using this kind of data set. So you can click. Do not uh, close window one by one. Just click the exist the button right here. It will automatically close all for you. So what I recommend is, uh, first of all, just select an anatomical image. You can either select the uh, provided T1 weighted imaging uh, by the give the toolbox. For example, if you click the load anatomy, it will automatically um, point to the give the data folder right here. So you can see, you can select this one single subject T1 folder. It can be done. Otherwise, you can again go to our own data, sub, uh, data folder. If you may recall that I do provide the uh, subjects uh, and the image for you. So you can uh, select either one, would be fine. Uh, for now, I, I picked the, the uh, subject once uh, in the topical image right here. But just remember that it's only for display. 
it doesn't mean anything, just uh, an image that uh, underlay for the display. Okay, so either way would be fine. And then for the uh, for the second step, for the second step right here, you should click uh, the toolbar. There is a toolbar called the display defaults right here. Okay, click this one. This is the uh, figure that you can set up the display parameters right here. So I would recommend you that you can using this one, you can uh, uh, change some values right here. For the uh, threshold value, I think the original one is one. This value is actually the v score, v score uh, threshold right here. So the default value is one. You can just try to uh, increase the value. For example, I use 1.96 right here. You can use 2, 3, or 4, or 5. Depends on uh, what kind of a threshold you'd like to use. Okay, And the images per figure, or original setup is 4. But as you can see, uh, that 4 networks within one figure is too tight. So to me, I like to display one image or one network uh, on each figure. Okay, So just select one would be fine. In the topical plan, you can select actual, sagittal, or chronal, but uh, now we use the actual. And the slice range, again, this is the range you like to di display the network. So this is, a, uh, this is a value that uh, you can use right now, but you can adjust this value. This is minus 50 is the starting point, the starting slice. Actually, if you king the uh, uh, negative value, that means it will start from uh, the slice lower than AC point. So normally minus 50 or minus 60 is recommended. It will start from the, I think the lower edge of this uh, surveillance. And I think the highest value right here is the ended slice right here. It should be as high as I think 65 to 75. So you can have a full coverage of your brain. And the number between these two values three is actually the increment of the slice. Of course, the unit is three millimeter. Okay, millimeter. So you can see this is a setup. You can just change the value and see what will happen. So let me change the number right here. So I will use one point nine six one. And okay, just actual view is okay. Minus fifty. And do remember why I ask you to select the anatomical imaging first, because every single time when you click. The the load anatomical button, it will automatically reset all the values right here. So every single time you load the anatomical, it will become the default value. So you need to reset the parameters again. Okay, so for now, you have already selected the anatomical imaging and uh, set up the default uh, display values right here. Now you can see uh, for, this, for this visualization method, you have four different methods right here. First one is the original one, the component. You can go through 25 different networks that you just uh, uh, reconstructed. And the subject, that means, because this is the group ICA, if you want to review the, uh, the IC maps for different subjects, you can use the second button. Also, go now is the way that you didn't use the uh, slice view, but using a three view. We call it chrono, actual, and central view. You can use this one to uh, inspect a specific network. So you can pick, you will have a chance to pick one of the components or one of the network to review the result. And this one, uh, composite, is actually uh, uh, the one you can compare two different networks. Okay, so you can just dis display them on the same image slice. Okay, we will try this one by one, no worry. So now, uh, original setup is component. And the final thing you should do is this step, the fourth step. And you can see that I put optional right here because uh, if you uh, if you are not uh, analyzing rising state data, you don't really need to sort your components. You have two ways to sort your components. The first one is you can give some temporal information. For example, the task design. However, for the rising state data set, you don't have the task design. Okay. But for the uh, data set that I provided to you today, actually this is the model test data, uh, data set with 10 blocks, right? So you can actually using the SPM design matrix as the temporal reference. So the gift toolbox can help you reorder, reorder the 
uh, networks. So you can easily to see uh, which one is highly correlated to the uh, uh, study design or task design. Okay. There's another way that uh, called so-called, um, I think, spatial, spatial sorting. That means you can give some uh, spatial mask or spatial image. You can let give the tool bus to identify which network may have high correlation with this kind of the spatial distribu uh, distribution. Okay, you have either way. However, this one is optional. If you didn't uh, use this one, then the dis display function will automatically display all the networks by the original order. Original means that is the order that is estimated by the ICA. The order itself doesn't mean anything. It didn't say that the first component is most significant compared to the others. No, the order doesn't mean anything. Okay, it's just kind of the uh, estimation uh, process or something. Okay, so you can start by not uh, saying you are going to sort the component, just use now original setting. So now you can click display right now. So we use component and click display. And just wait a moment, you can see it will do the image interpolation for display. So now you can see I only display one component for one figure. It will be easier to see the result. Just wait, it needs to display all the 25 networks, then it will give you the chance to just uh, screen screen all the uh, networks right there. Okay. Just wait, okay, right now. So you can see in the button just show up, so that means you can do something right now. So you can click the right arrow right now to go through all the network. You can see, oh, one of the network, this one. This is the IC signal or the uh, time course right here for the corresponding IC component right here. You can see the spatial distribution. It's definitely the uh, motor or sensory motor network right here. You can see bilateral primary motor cortex and you can see SMA region, supplementary motor area right here. Okay, you can also see some uh, some visual area right here. Okay. Anyway, you can see the the uh, reconstructed time course is pretty beautiful because it's highly correlated to what we ask a participant to do. Ten blocks, ten blocks uh, hand grasping right here. Then you can go through for others. Okay, so you can oh you can see eleven is another one that may exhibit a ten blocks pattern. So now you you take a uh, close look. You may find out that it, this is actually uh, located in the visual cortex. Okay, so that that's reasonable because uh, the participant is actually uh, perceive the uh, stimulus by uh, visual stimuli, right? Okay, so we can go through. However, if you are not familiar, you are the person who is not familiar with the brain network analysis. You may uh, you may very, very you may uh, become confused about result because you don't know which one is important, which, which one is not. So if you are using the test specified uh, FMI, and you did, the first uh, the, the requirement is you did uh, specify the first level um, uh, model in SVN, then you can use SVN.mat file as a crude for give the tool box to, re uh, to sort all the components. So that's why I actually put an spm.mat file. This is actually acquired after you specify the first level model. We have already did this before, so I have done this before, so I want to show you again. So what you are going to do is right now just click yes, okay? And click display. And now you can see you have a uh, sorting criteria. You can use either multiple regression. Multiple regression is pretty, uh, pretty, pretty much like the GLM. Or you can use the correlation. Okay. So for now, I may use correlation. It's more intuitive to do so. And you can see the sorting type. You have temporal and spatial. So either you can import the SVN domain file as the temporal information. Otherwise, you may import the spatial mask. How to obtain this kind of spatial mask? Normally, you can download this kind of spatial mask from other group because there are so many different groups already study ICA right now. So they may provide the uh, so-called standard or recommended uh, network mask on their website. So you can download, for example, you can download so-called DMN network mask. So you can use this as a template. So uh, give the two bus will seek out which one 
may have the uh, consistent spatial pattern with the one you provided. Okay, but for now we we may use the temporal right here. Temporal. Okay. So uh, how do you want to select the regressor for subjects? Actually, I will select the first one because we actually perform the same the same uh, task design for every subject. For some study, they may use different onset time or different blocks. Then you can uh, select this, the third option, different set of regressors for subjects and sessions. But for, for our case, we use the same set of regressors for all subjects and sessions. Okay, now it will ask you to select SPM design matrix right here. So now just select the one I provided for you, SPN domain. Okay. And now you will have the chance to see, this is the same that we specified before. We have the first one for motor task, and we have six following one for the, uh, for the uh, motion. Okay. And the final one is constant. So for the uh, correlation analysis, I will pick the first one because I want to know which network may have the ICA signal that highly correlated to the uh, motor task. Okay, so I click OK. And just wait, now it starts sorting all the components. So you can see that right now, the first pop out one is the highly correlated one to the task design. Okay, just wait a moment. Okay, so now you can see the first one is the component 7. It is not the first component, but this is the, uh, the component with the highest. You can see now the correlation coefficient is as high as the 0 0.78. Okay, it's that high. So you can see because all the uh, IC signal is pretty similar to what we designed. But you can see that why the block becomes so many. Originally we said we only have 10 blocks, but now you have 20 blocks. Why? Because now you concatenate two subjects data together. So you have 20 blocks right here. And you, if you take a closer look, when I say closer look, it means you can click on this signal. Click on this signal, then you will see there is a new uh, menu just pop up. Now you can see the dashed line is actually the, uh, the regressor that you specified within the SPM, right? And then the pink curve right here is actually the ICA time course right here. So you can see the pretty high, uh, pretty high uh, concordance right here. Okay. So you can now scroll, scroll uh, through different components. So the first one is motor. The second one is visual. Okay, visual cortex, and this one is again another visual cortex, but from different region. But you can see the thermal correlation is still very high, zero point four nine. Okay. Now, so you can scroll over, and as you can see, that sometimes you may see some correlation actually lower than 0.2 or lower than 0.1. That means there are some components you can just ignore. It, we didn't say that if you have 25 components on hand, you need to um, explain or, or to say that which component belongs to which network. You don't really need to do so. Actually, we will create so many different networks, but we only claim maybe six or 10 of them are meaningful networks. That's all you need to do, okay? So you just ignore the components that with very small the correlation right here. But the most interesting thing is right now, now you try to go to the negative, negative the temporal correlation right here. You can see the final one is actually, uh, I think located in the medial prefrontal, but uh, still have a large component located within the anterior horn of the ventricle. So I may skip this one because they may have some uh, I don't know, the image from the French one. That mostly are the physiological noise. So I make to the previous one, this one. The temporal correlation is still pretty high, but with a negative value. Negative 0 0.35. And you can see this network is actually DMN network. You can see precuneus, PCC, a medial prefrontal cortex, and a bilateral parietal region. This is very interesting, be, uh, interesting because as I mentioned before, that DM1 is one of the uh, network that are most actively during the resting state. However, in this data set, the subject is asked to perform the hand grasping. That means our brain needs to shift 
shift the resource from the DMN to uh, executive network. For most of, uh, for motor task, of course, the uh, motor network is the uh, task force. So you can see the positive correlation is located for the motor network, but negative uh, correlation can be identified for the DMN network. Okay. So now you can see 20 is the component you may want, and uh, component 7, as we said, is the motor network right here. Okay. So let me click uh, exist right here. So now you can try to use the orthogonal right here. If you are if you tend to focus on the component saver, that is the uh, motor one. Just click display right here. Now it's only display the component seven for you, but now you will have chance to select a one single point or one single cluster. So now you can see the lower part will display the original ball signal for this selected voxel for you. This is the original voxel right here. But this one is the um, ICA signal for the current voxel and uh, uh, for the uh, ICA component uh, right here. So you can see there is the, uh, uh, the comparison for you. So you can see uh, how consistent is right here. Okay. So you can just go through different uh, place right here by clicking the place you'd like. So you can see the peak value is actually located in this one. So this profile will become uh, pretty consistent with the uh, component time course right here. So this is the way that you can uh, use these things to display the result. Okay, so again, I want to close this one. And the final one is the com uh, composite uh, options right here. Now you can select the two, two uh, channel right here. For example, I'd like to display seven and the twenty. Twenty is the default mode, right? So I'd like to display motor network with the default mode network together. So I click display right here. So now you can see, you can compare the uh, time course right here as well as the uh, spatial distribution right here. So motor is right here and the blue, now the blue bar is for the, I think it's for the second component. So the second component right now is component 20. The first component right now is the component seven, that is the motor network right here. So you can see the results right here, you can see the time course right here. And of course, actually what we display right now is actually the uh, so-called group result. If you want to see the subject result, can you do so? Actually, yes. Right here. Let's come back to the uh, display GUI. You select the component number right here. But actually, you can also select, uh, select the uh, component image right here. For right now, right here, you can see there are main, main uh, strings right here. That means this is actually the group-wise the result. But if you want to see the result from, for example, subject one, you can click this one. This is the result from the subject zero, zero, 001. This is from the subject zero, zero, 002. Okay, so you can click either one. So for example, I click uh, subject zero, zero, 001. So you can review the result. So actually this is the way that you can switch from uh, main subject or, or, or a single subject. For the publication purpose, that means you, you are preparing your thesis or, uh, or the uh, manuscript, you definitely need to use the main or group result. But uh, for sometimes you want to review whether there is an outlier or is there any one uh, difference from others, then you can go through different subjects. You can do so. Okay. So this is the uh, display UI that you can, yeah, you can use. For the final things, it would be the, I think the report generator or something. I think I would re recommend these two different things right here. The first one, we may try this one. You can click on this display tools. There is a pop-up menu, and I think you can select this one. Network summary, network summary right here. Click this one. And again, uh, the toolbox will ask you to specify the parametric file. Okay, so just click the first one. Param uh, parameter underline info met. Just click OK. And then it will ask you to specify a directory to save the result. So now you can create a new one. Do not select this one because I have already uh, stored all the results for your reference. So you can create a new one. Just uh, new or something. Your yourself or something. Just click what you want. Summary. Just click R right here. 
So now I click this one as the output folder, this one. Okay, then just wait. Okay, oh, one thing you need to do, sorry. You need to actually um, uh, create some components. Now, the components means uh, the components you'd like to perform the functional cognitive analysis. <coughs> this kind of uh, um, cognitive analysis is actually so-called network based analysis. So sometimes we say this is the FNC, functional uh, network connectivity. If you want to do so, you need to specify uh, what kind of network do you want to uh, estimate the functional connectivity. Just click the plus button right here. <coughs> okay, now I would like to uh, select, uh, again, seven. You can click seven and there is a show button right here. SHOW show button. You can see this is the motor network. So now you can uh, click motor right here. Okay, and click down. Then it will assign the component seven as the motor. It's for the labeling. Okay, and now I'd like to include uh, the visual network. I if I if I remember right, I think uh, uh, component eleven and fifteen. You can click show. Oh, no, not fifteen. Which one? I forget. There is another one. Uh, 11, 12, I think. Maybe. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is the... Um, which one? Just forget. Anyway, just uh, I just randomly selected two network anyway. If uh, these two, you think these two are belongs to visual network, you can s uh, select the multiple components right here. Then labeled as visual. But only if you are sure that uh, these two are belongs to visual. This is definitely not the correct one. But just for for a demonstration, okay? Click it down. So now you can see the components right now is not actually for each IC component. It's actually the components you can create to contain multiple components right here. Okay. Now me uh, let me uh, also include the DMN. Okay, this one is the DMN. down right here okay so as you can see right here now I only use the three components right here so now I just put the IC as a prefix is okay I can use the 1.96 again as a threshold and I only use a positive value okay so right now just click OK and just wait then you will see several different uh, managers pop up it will just try to show you uh, all the results and just don't do anything because now it's trying to print all the figures into one HTML file for you, uh, for the report purpose. Okay. I will introduce what uh, what does uh, what these figures mean. What the one you are looking at is actually called uh, connectogram. That means you can actually perform the functional connectivity analysis between different networks. Okay. I think it's uh, oh, but uh, wait, there will pop out a, a web page for you. That is the generated report. Just wait, be patient. <coughs> Finally, okay, you will see this HTML file. So you can see this is kind of a report system. Now you can see I select a motor. This is a component seven right here. So you can see there is a seven right here, means this is the uh, component seven. So you can see this is the uh, plot of on the brain surface right here and this is a feature including the component 12 and uh, 11 right here okay of course I select uh, one of the cerebellar uh, network as a visual it's just for demonstration okay DMN right here so you can see uh, the precuneous region bilateral parietal and the medial prefrontal cortex right here and you can see this is the uh, functional network functional network connectivity correlation map right here so you can see that actually I prepared one slide for you okay this one so you can see uh, we only identify three components that means three uh, three groups right here so you can see this matrix is actually three by three to estimate the, uh, I think this is only the linear correlation or Pearson correlation coefficient between any two any two networks right here. So you can see if the uh, color become uh, red or blue, that means they have a positive, strong, a positive or a strong negative correlation 
by the but if the color close to the green or light yellow then it means there is no significant correlation by the okay so you can tell this and another uh, connecton green right here go back to the report you can see this one this beautiful figure actually try to uh, give you uh, different information including the spatial distribution not only the matrix form because matrix form didn't tell you which one uh, distributed in the uh, imaging space so you can see this one actually give you the demonstrated um, imaging labeling right here but also create a circle uh, with the uh, inner lines or inner curves to depict uh, the correlation again the correlation coefficient can be labeled by the color with the uh, uh, light yellow and the light blue in this figure that means they have a significant correlation with positive value and a negative value respectively right here so you can see actually uh, this one and this one this is the motor motor component this one is a visual component they have a high correlation between each other because this test is actually induced by visual stimuli and uh, executed by the uh, motor region right here However, the deformal network become uh, less correlated with the motor area because actually the amount would be deactivated to support the motor task right here. Okay, so I think they also provide some crop images so you can directly use this imaging for the publication. I think it is a very convenient function that you can do. Okay, and the final button that you can try is this one. Okay, wait. Oh, every single time you create a report, it will automatically close the gift toolbox. I don't think this is a good idea, but you just need to restart the gift right here. Now you can click the result a summary. Again, you will need to specify the parameter file. Again, just pick the uh, parameter on the line info.net file right here. And it will give you a chance to perform the, again, regression. Okay, so you can either click yes and select the spn.net file for you to do uh, pretty similar things or, or just no yeah, otherwise. Okay. Now I'm not going to uh, wait for him. Uh, again, you need to uh, specify some parameters right here. It's pretty similar for the display parameter that we just set up. So after you uh, set up all the parameters, just click OK, then again wait a couple minutes, then result will show up. But now I'm not going to click. I will show you the result directly. For this folder, GICN result is the previous uh, result for you. So you can see, again, they will uh, pop up so many different things. But I think there is one useful information you definitely need to think about is the spectral analysis. For example, now we go to the component 7. That is the motor thing. Okay, this one. We can see the IC signal right here before. We can see the spatial map right here, but we never see this. This is actually the spectral analysis. So now you can see, we, we actually now believe that most of the brain activation is located uh, between the frequency band. I think between 0 0.01 to uh, at high as the 0 0.1. So you can see actually this motor activation, the frequency is actually located in this correct frequency. So sometimes if you want to uh, go through different uh, components, you, you, you are hesitated about which one is the uh, meaningful one. You can check the frequency. Uh, the spectrum or the frequency uh, profile right here. If you see something like this one, I would say it's more, sometimes we call wide a wide band because every uh, frequency band have a strong power. That means this may be some uh, meaningless region. For example, this is actually located in the eyeball. So you don't need to discuss anything about this. Just ignore this one. So this one definitely meaningful. We can try to see this one. It should be meaningful. So you can see it's located uh, actually um, pretty dangerous because it's uh, uh, clearly, uh, clearly located at the I think the border of the cere cerebellum and uh, some portion of the brain stem. It may be um, polluted by the physiological noises, so be aware of this. You can see there is a high peak right here. So this is one now, this is all the physiological signals. So you can see it's mostly located in the ventricle or artery region. So you can see the point two to point three is actually the respiratory frequency. So this is not the brain activation. Again, this is not the correct one. This one may be meaningful. So look at this. This is a visual cortex. So you can use the spectrum to to screen or to select uh, the components right here. You don't need to care about this one. No, not this one. 
This one maybe, but just check it out. No, not good enough. Ibo. This one, this one is again the visual cortex. So you can see high spectrum uh, in the low frequency band right here. Okay. So I just try to show you several different ways. And uh, the final things I'd like to emphasize is in GIF, the toolbox is actually calculate the also calculate the fractional ALFF value for you. Okay, so you can see for different component, for example, component seven is a motor. You can see the FALF value is pretty high, as high as the four point two. For others, may uh, maybe point point one, point two, point three, point four. But you can sometimes see some uh, high value for component seven. And again, now component eleven is the visual cortex. You can see the value is pretty high. So there is another way that you can uh, screen which network you should. I emphasize or focus on. You should try to do something like that. Okay. And this is on beta waves and something else. Okay, so I think this is the information that I think uh, GIF, the toolbox, can provide to you. And I think this is a pretty handy toolbox that actually can give you so much information. So uh, for the original group that uh, that provide the GIF, the toolbox, they actually published so many different papers. And I believe uh, ICA is one of the uh, significant or, or promising approach to perform the uh, FMI data analysis. But I think that's, that's all for today. So I, I do hope that you can uh, practice for every single step and to see the result. Okay.